the cold weather has me grounded. Today was my off day. I was supposed to go up and do some fishing, but man, <laughs> it didn't work out, man. So what's up? W welcome back. What's up, Big Greasy? What's up, Daniel? Joe, what's going on? I'm gonna be looking back and forth. So if I'm not looking at the camera, I'm trying to read the comments. What, what's going on, fellas? How's it going? How's it going? Appreciate that, man. You love the channel. Thank you. Thank you so much. But yeah, so today was supposed to be my fishing day and this cold front just really blew some hard north winds and I was supposed to go out to Freeport. Just didn't happen, man. I just didn't want to risk any, uh, I didn't want to risk any danger. Let's just say that. And I just, I hate the cold weather. I have a bad knee and every time the weather turns cold, my knee starts stiffening up. Um, I guess that's an old man syndrome. I don't know. But yeah, man, what's up guys? How's it going? Jehizo Guerrero, sorry if I butcher your name, man. What's going on? Bishop Laffer, what's up? Slick Rick, my man, what's going on, brother? How cold is it over there? It's uh, it's too cold for my comfort. I think it's like low 50s, I think. But I know a lot of people are gonna laugh. That's not that's not really cold, but I just hate the cold weather. Thomas, what's going on? What's going on? Big fan, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I didn't want to risk it, Daniel. I just, man, I just, you know, going out there, the, the winds really picked up around 10 a.m. I, I figured maybe I can go out around 5-ish, get on the water, probably about 6.30-ish. The sun rises about 7. I would have maybe two and a half hours if I'm lucky before the winds really picked up. But then I just, I, I didn't want to risk it. So I'm staying home, did some, ran some errands, did some stuff for the channel and decided to do a live stream. It's been a while since I've done a live stream, so, yeah. 55 degrees. <laughs> Eriberto says, we need a garage sale for the public to clean up some of your overstock. Uh, yeah, man, I have a lot of junk. I really do. Well, it's not junk. It's I have a bunch of lures. Um, let me see if I can situate this. Like, if you guys look, like, right there right there that's uh that's my shelves that's not even half the stuff i have i have so much lures in each container each plastic bin right there i mean i just have so many lures you know what i think i will do a giveaway though um i think i can probably i tell you what let's do this this is something just popped into my head thank you for reminding me i'm gonna do a giveaway i'm gonna give away Let's say $100 worth of Guggen baits, lures. Uh, that includes swim baits, top waters, jigs. I mean, the whole kabang. I'm going to give it away. I'll post it on Instagram. If you haven't followed me yet, follow me on Instagram. It's easier for me to do giveaways there. So um, hit me up. Make sure you follow me. I'll start working on it after the live stream is done. But yeah, $100, minimum $100 worth of lures to one lucky winner. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. 55 degrees in Seabrook, man, that's that's cold. Keep up the great fishing videos. Stay safe out there. I appreciate that, man. It's uh, it's a grind, man. YouTube is cutthroat. You probably heard me talking about it many times. It's 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 pretty tough, man. And you gotta really put your time in to be successful. Ultralight or light areas for upper slots and trout. I prefer oh upper slots. I would probably go light. Uh, the old, I mean, you can't, not to say you can't catch an, an upper slot red with an ultra light. I've, I've done it a few times, uh, but it's going to be a long fight. Otherwise, uh, yeah, like for example, this is a light action areas right here. This right here is the light action areas. This is the one you're speaking about. I don't have an ultra light with me, right? No, actually, I do. It's over there. I'll show you in a minute. But this is the light action. If you're going to, this versus an ultra light, um, versus an upper slot red, I, I'd probably go with the light action. I mean, it's still really flimsy compared to the, the rods that you buy over the counter, like at Academy or Dick's or any tackle store. But yeah, light action is what I would do for an upper slot red. Now, media or mid slot to a lower slot, have no fear, the ultralight will, you know, bring those in, no problem, because I've caught tons and tons of lower to mid slots with an ultra light and it handles it with no problem at all. 
when am I going to go try? When am I going to try to go fishing again? Uh, I guess whenever my next day off, and if the weather, you know, weather let if the weather lets me, then I'll, I'll go. I mean, I, I go during my days off. <laughs> we ready. <laughs> You're awesome. No, man, you're awesome for being on this live stream. I appreciate that. Is the Shimano Tranks 200 a good reel? Yes, it is a very good reel. Shimano Tranks 200. I personally have the Shimano Tranks 300 with the power handle. I've used it one time on a channel. I just haven't had the, I guess, the situation where it calls for it. Um, it's a big, heavy-duty reel for big swim baits big baits, um, if you're dropping crab with like a six ounce weight or something, that'd be appropriate for it. Uh, but it's, it's a good wheel, I'm a good wheel. It's a good reel to use. Okay, let's see, I am trying to decide between a Calcutta BFS or an Antares. Woo, man, you are not joking, man. Those are some high-end freaking reels, man. A Calcutta, Calcutta BFS versus Antares. You know, they're actually two different reels. The Calcutta BFS is obviously a BFS application. If you don't know what BFS means, BFS means bait finesse system, which is a Japanese term for ultralight fish fishing or what we call here in the States crappie fishing, like really small little lures, like the one sixteenth ounce and lighter. Uh, the Japanese call it BFS, but the Calcutta BFS is designed to throw those small little really ultra micro lures and terrace not really and terrace would be more of your it's like a more versatile reel i would say anywhere from one eighth ounce all the way to a two ounce swim bait that'd probably be the targeted um use for an terrace i have the Antares myself you've seen my last or a couple videos before i did an unboxing i've already fished with it a few times it's a heck of a reel um, very shiny just you got to make sure you take care of it because it's magnesium, so. Patrick Silver, what's up? Let's see, Thomas, how light of lures do you throw on your casting setups and you get good distance? Um, I, I throw one sixteen ounce flats bug. You saw my video where uh, I'm talking about the Veribus line, the really small uh, saltwater finesse. That was a one sixteen ounce flats bug and I was launching that thing you just have to have the right setup. Let me see if I have it here. Actually, I do have, hold on. Okay, so uh, here we go. I have, a, I have a bunch of setups right here, ready to go. I was, like I said, I was trying to go fishing today, but just didn't happen. Okay, so this is the, this is the one that, this is actually probably my favorite, favorite ultralight setup right here. This is the suppressor ultralight. Uh, let me get this. Okay, there we go. This is a suppressor ultralight. This right here is the 1 8 ounce flats bug. I can fling a 1 16 ounce flats bug with no issues with this setup right here. This is the Daiwa Stees, uh TW. This is also designed for the really small ultralight micro lures. I have the Veravas saltwater finesse, a 0 0.4 gauge. They're really thin. I don't even, can you even see this? Yeah, you can kind of see this. Uh, but it, I'm able to launch the heck out of this with this ultralight old 18. I mean, it's and you can catch some big fish on it. And when you do catch a big fish, it's so much fun because it really tests your skills and see and it really tests you to see if you know how to use your drag system, if you know how to work the fish. Uh, because if you try to horse it in, it's not going to work, man. Something's going to break. And that's the beauty of ultralight fishing is it, it, it tests your skills, it's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun when I use ultralight stuff. Let's see here. Oh shoot, HGX Polestar, Oscar, my man, 1999. <laughs> I appreciate that, buddy. I really do, man. It's been a long time since I talked to you. I hope you're doing well. I saw your little clip on Instagram that you were catching a big red, man. Good job. Okay, let's see here. Justin asks, am I in the Guggen Squad? No, I am not part of the Guggen Squad, but I am part of their, um, how do I say, like affiliate program. Um, I use their lures, I use their baits. Um, they work, you know, they work really well for redfish. 
believe it or not, even though they're fresh, freshwater oriented, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like their stuff. Um, but no, I'm not part of the Guggen squad. What am I unboxing? Yes, we will get to that in just a second. I apologize. Just hold on. Let me answer a few more of these questions and we'll get into the unboxing. Ryan says he loves the bug lures. Thank you, man. Bugs is, uh, man, he knows how to make some great lures, man. They really work on the upper Texas coast for redfish, flying trout. I've been slaying them, slaying them with the flats bug. So, yeah. Let's see. Carson, love the vid, Nick. Vids, Nick. Keep it up. By the way, going to be 30, 36 degrees tonight in San Antonio. Dude, that's super cold, man. Stay safe. Uh, if you're not, if you don't have to be on the road, don't be on the road. Obviously, thank you so much, though, for the, uh, the kind words. Crappie fishing, yes. Crappie fish is like BFS in Japanese. Big Greasy. Big Greasy says flounder are thick where me and you fish last time we met. Are they really thick right now? Well, that's, that's good to know. What's up, Oscar? Daniel says, love BFS Reels. Your channel got me into it. I appreciate that, man. I mean, people think I'm, I'm full, of, full of it sometimes. Uh, talking about all this BFS, like, you know, it's hard to grasp here in America because everyone is so used to big reels, big thick braid line, 500 yards of 50 pound braid, you know, and then you're just horsing those fish in like it's nothing. But you know, you, you gotta enjoy the sport too. Fishing is, part of fishing is fighting the fish. And um, I mean, that's, that's, one of, that's what makes fishing so much fun is that thrill of hunting the fish down or, you know, getting the fish to bite your bait. And then on top of that, fighting that fish to come in because redfish are known. That's why they're the official saltwater game fish here in Texas because us Texans, we know that redfish, they fight. They give you that great fight and doing it on ultralight, you know, crappie fishing, BFS fishing, whatever you want to call it, it's just so much more pleasurable. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Darth Vader Carr says, this is an awesome channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's see, Oscar says, does your winter fishing catching slow any? Yeah, it, it slows down, man. I mean, don't, everyone, everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna hit a point where, you know, you're gonna get skunked a few times. That's, that's just the nature of the beast. That's why I really hate the cold weather. It just, it slows down fishing. And then I'm at a point in my YouTube career where I actually have to start doing other things or think about start doing other things. So I'm gonna start getting to hunting again. Uh, especially pig hunting, coyote hunting. I'm getting all that set up, getting the equipment. So stay tuned. So when the fishing is slow, the hunting part comes in. And um, hunting is a lot of fun. Um, you know, I'm pro Second Amendment. Uh, I believe in firearms, um, our right to own it, all that good stuff. A lot of people may disagree, but, you know, we're in Texas. Um, hunting, fishing is just outdoor stuff. It's just a big part of Texas life. See, Justin, you saw me at the mouth of the San Bernard River and yelled my name. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I run into a lot of people um, when I'm out in the water, believe it or not. Um, don't be shy. If you see me out there, man, come come say what's up. You know, I won't bite. I, I'm, I love to meet subscribers, uh, people that love the channel. You know, shake your hand. Thank you personally for supporting the channel through, you know, watching the, watching the video and subscribing. Uh, don't be shy, man. Like, if you ever see me at Bucky, I'm at Bucky's a lot because I like using their toilet and uh, I like their burritos. Uh, <laughs> if you see me at Whataburger, I'm a, I'm a big patron of Whataburger. Uh, what else? If you see me at a tackle store, Academy, Walmart, um, sometimes I'm at FTU. You know, don't, don't, don't be afraid to say what's up. Come and say hi. I'd love to talk to you. You're throwing a hothead bugs now at the pond. Oh man, I hope you catch a big bass, man. Uh, Casey asks, what's your go-to go, go cold gear for kayak fishing? So, I mean, I'm a big believer in Sims. Uh, I've been using Sims for many, many years. Um, really, really started using Sims a lot on the channel because, uh, because I fish a lot more and I need, I need gear and equipment and clothing that's going to take the beating and last. And Sims has been top notch. So I, I have some jackets from Sims. I have some base layers. 
uh, pants. I uh, just wear my fishing pants. I, I'll, I'll wear some um, waterproof socks. It's good to have some waterproof socks. You can get those on Amazon. And um, just layer up. Uh, sometimes I'll wear a base layer or not even a base layer. I'll just wear my regular, you know, performance long sleeve Sims fishing shirt. And I'll pull, I'll have a pullover on top of it, like a fleece pullover. And if it's a really, really cold, I will have a, like a, um, a performance like Sims fishing jacket. Like it's almost like down, I guess, but it's not down. It's polyester. Uh, that keeps me really warm. And it's like rain, kind of drizzly and it's cold. I also have, um, my wading jacket from Sims, which I will put over like my pullover. Um, I have some waterproof gloves from Sims, which I really don't use much. I'm always using those leather gloves. You always see me on the channel. But Sims, yeah, I, I everything is mine is Sims. I, I, I love Sims. What do I do about fishing when the high is 45 degrees? Merino, merino wool. <laughs> if it's 45 degrees, I should not go fishing, man. That's just too that's just too cold for me. But if I need to go fishing, I have to film. Um, yeah, like I said, I would layer up, man. Like my fishing shirt underneath, then I would put a pullover and then a jacket. And that pretty much will cover me for 45 degrees. Let's see here. What's the reason for the fluorocarbon leader line? Just a question. Um yeah, I mean, I, I like fluorocarbon leader um, because, I mean, I for, I guess I don't really have any scientific uh, backup with this claim, but they say fluorocarbon leader is um, more invisible in the water versus um, mono. Uh, I don't know how much truth that there's into that, but fluorocarbon, I've been using it for years. Um, I use a Veribus now since uh, they, they sponsored the channel. The Veribus is um, high quality fluorocarbon leader, it's titanium coated. Um, they have all this stuff that they put into their fluorocarbon leader to make it extra strong, extra, extra thin. Um, I just like, um, and plus it, it's, it's abrasive. It's, it's abrasive, it, what am I trying to say? It protects your you from losing your lure, especially if you're running it on top of oyster, because if you have it straight braid tied to your lure, Braid cuts really easy, especially when you have oyster, but fluorocarbon leader or even mono will protect you from those um, like harsh abrasiveness from the oyster. So I like using a leader line. Um, sometimes I don't use a leader line when I'm really lazy and I just say, uh, I, you know, I want to switch out lures and say I run out of fluorocarbon line. I'll just cut that fluorocarbon line off and I'll straight tie braid onto my to my um, lure. But most of the time I use fluorocarbon. I just it's just habit, I guess. I, I can't say it's hundred percent is fluorocarbon better than mono. I, I don't have any facts or data to back that up, but you know, just many years I've been using using fluorocarbon and it's been very successful with me. So I, I always stick with what's successful with me. Um I hope that makes sense. All right, let me move on. Let's see here. All right, Jeffrey says, not sure if you have done it, but how about a wife picks Walmart gear challenge video for an idea? Um, okay, I, I guess I can do that. Uh, I know Lojo does it a lot. Some of the other freshwater YouTubers, I see their videos, I'm subscribed to them. So, I mean, it, 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 I guess it could be fun. Um, I didn't think you guys would really like that, but I guess if you, how many of you guys would like to see those type of videos, like those type of challenges? Like I go to Walmart, someone picks my lure and I try to catch a fish with it or um, whatever the case may be. Those, those, uh, I don't know what you call it. I wouldn't say childish type challenges because they are pretty entertaining. Okay, let's call them entertaining challenges. If you want to see me do that, comment below. Let me know if I get a lot of you guys that say yes, if you like watching that stuff, then we'll start doing it. Oscar says, bro, I'm working, I'm working package for hunting. If I get a trip book, I'll holler on Instagram. Let's do it, bro. Let's do it, man. I'm down. Let's, let's hunt, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very serious, man. I love hunting, especially if it's for pigs and coyotes, because you just get to shoot as many as you want. What area do I go hunting? Usually um, I have my boy Cliff. He's way down south um, near Rockport, I would say. Um, 
you guys know Braden. Braden Sharon, I've been collabing with him. He's the other YouTuber in um, Corpus. He has a buddy up in uh, the Hill Country. Also another, I also know another YouTuber that has a lease up in the Hill Country. I mean, it's just making connections like that um, and uh, taking advantage and helping each other out in that way. Oh, Alfonso Perez, $14.99. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that uh, generous donation, man. I, I really do appreciate that. Thank you. And I, I always see you, man. I always see you comment. I always see you on the live stream. So thank you. I would consider you one of like my main subs that always like that engages with me. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Carson asks, can I do a review on the SVTW in the future? Yes, I will do a... I will do a review. I think I actually have that one here. Let me see. SVTW. Actually, I... No, I lied. I don't have that. It's, it's That's in my storage room. But the SVTW, man, that's... that's a, I mean, I straight up. I mean, there's... I'll do I'll, I'll try to do a review, but it's a hell of a reel. It's... It's, it's, uh, if you can afford it and, um, you have the money for it, I say hundred percent go for it. It's, it's a, it's such a solid, solid reel. Nathan says you have an awesome channel with your tips. I got my first slot read and a week later caught my personal best at 25, 26 inches. Man, that's awesome. Nathan, thank you so much. Yeah. I tried to, I tried to put those tips and tricks in my video. If you, I know a lot of you don't watch the whole thing. A lot of you scroll, you scroll through it. I mean that everyone has ADD somehow, some way. But uh, if you do watch my video, I I tactical tactically put in like tips and tricks within the video. They're really short. You got I mean, you got to watch the whole video to catch them, uh, but they're there. So thank you so much. Mike says, "Love your videos, man. I hope." I hope I see you soon so I can show you how to fish. I appreciate that, Mike. I, I need some, I do need some fishing lessons. Patrick says Frog Togs is pretty good. Yeah, Frog Togs is a good brand. Uh, but I've used Frog Togs waders in the past. Rhino Fishing says West Bay is a is great in the winter. Is what I meant for my last comment. Oh yeah, West Bay. I've been to West Bay during the winter time. I I did, I did okay. It wasn't it wasn't too good, but. Um, I mean, if you know the spots in West Bay, because it's it's so pressurized, uh, more power to you. I mean, any spot is pretty good during the winter if you know where to fish. Sloshy wants a video of winter wear. I, I possibly, I, I possibly can do that. I mean, like I said, it's really simple, uh, but I'll be more than happy doing it in the future. It's like I said, my if it's really cold, like high forty five degrees, the one I probably won't even go out. But if I have to go out, it'd be like. Um, my fishing shirt, a pullover, and a jacket if I need it. George says, I only carry two rods, hollow point, medium light with paddle tail and suppressor, ultralight with flats bug. So far, the medium light is winning. Good for you, man. That's, that's awesome, dude. Hollow point is a very, very good rod. The suppressor, obviously, you know, suppressor is a higher, higher end rod. Um, ultra light with the flats bug. Wait till you hook up a big fish if you haven't yet. I mean, that's that's a lot of fun. Peggy says, hey, hey, from Corpus. What's going on? Thank you for tuning in. Down in Corpus, I hope you guys are doing okay over there. <laughs> Rhino says, fishing is great at 45 degrees. Real anglers fish in the cold. Uh, <laughs> I guess I can't argue with that. I mean, I just don't like the cold weather. Peggy asked me, what's my favorite place to go fishing? Um, I mean, a general statement would be, I love marsh fishing, obviously, because that's what I do mostly on the channel. Um, but, you know, I I live in Houston, Galveston, Freeport, Brazoria, Matagorda, Sargent, you know, all those areas, all the way up to the Texas, Louisiana, Louisiana border, Sabine, I fish all those areas. Uh, they all look, they're all, they all have their pros and cons. Uh, their differences. That's what's that's what's so cool about the Texas coast. I mean, like I, I feel like every fifty miles on the Texas coast, it just changes. So um, there's so much coastline to fish on in, in the great state of Texas.
Oh, Joe, you found out my Mike. Yeah, he's my stepbrother. That's awesome, man. Thank you for uh, giving him business. <laughs> That's crazy. That is a small role. Rhino says, Flair does those challenges in the army. Yeah, Flair, dude. Flair is uh, on a whole new... He's like a di on a different planet when it comes to YouTube. I mean, he's so big. Um, he's like 2 million plus subscribers. I mean, yeah, I mean, he... He generates an audience and he, he has those uh, challenges, man. He's, he's an awesome, he's an awesome uh, content creator. Shout me out. What's up, Turner? What's up, William? Okay, William, did I already do an unbox? No, I didn't. I will get there in just a second. Let me just finish a few more of these questions. First time you made it to a live show. Welcome in, fishing man Reggie Fresh. Jay asked, how do I like the Saltiga? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really used it yet because um, I got kind of late in the season. My plan was to use it on some big offshore fish like amberjack or um, what else? Maybe big jacks, um, like 40 plus inch jacks. I just didn't have the chance yet. Kingfish, obviously. Wahoo is coming around or Wahoo will be here soon, like in February. So stay tuned for that. Maybe I'll be able to use my Saltiga then. But I mean, if you know anything about Saltiga, you follow all those high-end reels. Daiwa Saltiga is like on a whole new level. Um, a lot of people, it's better than the Shimano Stella. I mean, it's it's a fabulous looking reel. And I've seen them, you know, pulling those big old GTs like with nothing, with no, with no effort. So I already know it's a good reel. Emmanuel says, how is Gallison Castaway Bridge fishing during this cold front? I'm assuming you meant Causeway. Um, I would imagine a Causeway would do pretty well, especially um, at nighttime with trout still because it's deeper water. And when it gets cold, the fish like to actually go deeper to stay warm. So um, I imagine that'd be pretty good. I'm not sure. Marcus says, crappy live chat. Oh, I appreciate that, Marcus. Thank you for clicking on the channel. And watching it because you just made me some money. I appreciate that. Nathan says, I caught my PB25 and 26 red, red because of your tips last weekend, bro. I appreciate that. Thanks. Good job, Nathan. That's awesome. Those are some nice fish. Joe says, how do you donate money to a channel? Um, you know, you can you can donate through the live stream. Like, um, I think, I don't even know what you call those things. Um, Happy chats or something? I'm not sure, but also you can be become a patron and you know if you're a patron, you get a bunch of benefits for doing that. So check that out. Peggy asks, what do I suggest for a beginner kayak? I'm used to waiting for now, but don't want to spend a thousand dollars for a kayak. What is good? So Peggy, I would recommend first of all, you go to a kayak dealership and demo some kayak, see if, it, if it's something that you like. And if it is something you like, then I would recommend looking in the used market, like uh, Facebook market, Marketplace or Craigslist. Um, I would recommend getting a pedal driven kayak instead of a regular paddle conventional kayak because it helps you become hands free when you fish off a kayak. And that's a big thing because once you get a paddle, like a, a conventional paddle kayak, not saying it's bad or anything, but your hands are always tied into the paddle and you're fighting the current and winds and stuff like that. So with a pedal drive, at least your, your legs and feet are controlling your kayak while you can still fish with your hands. Um, but yeah, look in the used market. That, that's what I would do. Yak Fishing says, what's up, Nick? Video at Seawolf Park for Flounder soon. Um, maybe we'll, we'll see what happens. I have man, the Seawolf is a very popular place. Everyone knows Seawolf Park and during the flounder run, Seawolf Park gets super, super crowded. I'm talking about shoulder to shoulder fishermen, people crossing their lines. Um, in my opinion, that's, that's not too much fun because of the COVID also, you have to kind of watch out. People get frustrated with each other for, you know, having your lines tangled and people getting stuck in the rocks. I mean, it's just, it's tough. I mean, I might do it if it's, if it's not as crowded, but usually during the flounder running, it's pretty crowded. So I try to avoid those areas. And like I said, flounder can be caught in 
other different places in the marsh. So I don't know. We'll see. You're looking at the Stella, and we hope you enjoy the Saltiga. So the Stella is a, a really good reel, too. You ain't, you, if you get a Stella, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right. I think we are caught up. Oh, wait. One last. Jason asks, what do I think about the restrictions on flounder? Do you think the letter... Do you think the letter changed? I'm not sure what that last part means, but I like the restrictions on the flounder, 15 inch minimum. Although in my humble opinion, I would keep the, the bag limit two year long, possibly during a flounder run, maybe just make it one, but a lot of people would say they spend a lot of money, time, just to try to travel from Houston to the coast. So just catching one flounder would be a waste of time to them. Okay, that's cool. So in my opinion, I would I would have kept the flounder bag at two uh, annually, uh, or meaning two year long, yearly long, I can't even talk. Two maximum flounder caught each session you're out and 15 inches minimum, that's, that's what I would have done. Okay, so let me get the, the box. Let's do the unboxing with us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got a package. If any of you guys can guess what's in this package, I will give you $100 worth of lures. Can you guess in 30 seconds what's in the package and what if it has to be specific. You got to tell me what brand is in the package and what model is in the package. So we're going to make it hard, okay? So I'm counting down right now. I'm going to set my timer. 30 seconds. Go. Shimano Stella, a reel, okay, yeah, it is a reel. You guys know I love reels, so very good, it's a reel. But what kind of reel is it? Saltiga, Bugs, Jits, Shimano Stella, Shimano. I don't see, I still don't see the answer. Shimano Stella, easy, no. Come on guys, Shimano DC, Bugs, Flats Bug, Pen Phantom, nope. Drone, Joe, <laughs> no man. Shimano Antares DC, oh that's close, but no. Piss of Fun, Bait Casting. That's funny. That's funny. Daiwa. Okay, maybe we're on to something. Yak Fishing 27. Daiwa. All right, we got 12 seconds remaining. Pen. Concept TX2. Nope, not 13 fishing. Dak was baitcaster. Come on, guys. Metanium MGO. Seven seconds remaining. Daiwa Lexa 400. Oh, we're getting close. Corrado MGL. BG 5000. Nope. Three, two, one. Oh gosh, man. You guys were actually pretty close, man. It's a Daiwa reel. I'll just give you that much. So let's go and open it up. Man, it was, it's so easy. If you guys see this reel, you'd be like, oh my God, I don't know why I didn't guess it. But yes, it's a Daiwa reel. Believe it or not, I purchased this with my own money, okay? I purchased this reel with my own money. There we, there we go, folks. Look what we got here. The Coastal SVTW. How many of you guys have actually heard about this reel right here? The Coastal, Daiwa Coastal SVTW. How many of you guys heard of this? Let me, let me see the comments. No one. What? Joe Pena, 20 bucks. Man, thank you so much, Joe. I do appreciate that. Thank you for giving, for being a patron for my, um, uh, Step Brothers business, I appreciate that too. Thank you so much. Uh, I always see you on too, so yeah, man, you're you're one of the big supporters. Thank you, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> okay, here we go. The blue one, yeah, Peggy, correct. It is blue. I got one. LOL. Almost bought it on eBay. Easy two fifty. I was looking at Coastal yesterday. Man, Oscar, you should have guessed that. Why didn't you guess it, brother? You guys know I love Daiwa and Shimano. Everyone says Shimano. Why do everyone say Shimano? I just don't get it. All right, here we go. The Coastal is blue. Yes, it is blue color. Whoo! Look at that, people. Look at that. Let's put the box here. Look how pretty that looks, man. 
Look at that. This is the coastal model from Daiwa. This was specifically designed for us Gulf Coast fishermen on the Texas, all over the Gulf Coast. That's why they call it the coastal SVTW. Uh, it has the SV spool meaning stress, stress free, versatile. I think that's what it means. TW is the way the line is managed right here, the TW. See how it flips like that. And the um, reason why this is a coastal model is because it has the non-corrosive bearings in it. I think it's, how many bearings is this? Uh, seven plus one, seven plus one ball bearings. This right here is a seven, seven to one gear ratio. Um, actually, that's a question I've gotten a lot. Like, what gear ratio do I recommend? I recommend honestly going with the fastest gear ratio you can buy for that model. I always get a minimum seven to one. And now you're probably asking yourself, well, why do you get the seven to one? Because I, I like to side cast fish a lot. And when I do miss, which I do miss the target a lot, I like to reel it in as fast as possible and give myself another chance. If you have a, a slower gear ratio reel, it's harder to do that. And on top of that, if I need to work my lure slower, then I will obviously crank slower. So uh, I love the versatility of having a faster ratio uh, reel, whether it be bait casting or spinning reel. I, I, I think they're more useful in my opinion, but yeah, man, this is a, uh, it's a really nice reel. It's in line with the Tatula SVTW. Uh, I also have that one, but I really wanted to try the coast. So I love that blue color right here. Um, so I need your advice guys. What should I put this on? Should I put it on? I got two rod setups right here. I need help. Okay. I got the Arius light action, which is on top. And I have the suppressor, uh, medium light, which is on the bottom. It's both seven footers. One is light action. One is medium light. So they're pretty much on almost on par with each other. You can tell the medium light has a little bit more backbone. But which one would I put this on? Or which one should I put this on? I need your advice. Which one does it look good on? Come on, tell me. Let me know. Let's see. Go with the light. Medium light. Medium light. The top. <laughs> More fun when fighting. Suppressor. Top. Wow, it's actually pretty pretty good draw. Uh, you like the black one. Suppressor. Definitely medium light. Okay, I feel like the medium light is ahead. Suppressor, not the red one. Medium. Okay, I guess we'll... So medium light, you guys good with the medium light? So if I put that with the medium light, let me actually put this areas down. Actually, let me go ahead and just put this on real fast so you guys have a visual to see what it looks like. All right, that's what it looks like. Does that look good? Does that look good? I don't know, man. It kind of, that blue color kind of clashes with that gray. What do you guys think? <laughs> Suppressor, not the red one. What do you guys think? Does it look good? The medium light? Yes, yes, yes. Kind of clashing. I agree with you. It looks dope. Okay. Some people like it, some, but it looks like the majority of you guys like it. Um, some don't, I don't know. Uh, but I guess, I guess we, uh, I guess we'll leave it like that. And um, if I need something light, I have the areas right here, which is the light action. I will be more than happy to put that on too. Uh, but I'm gonna be using this for like heavier swim baits. Wait, when I go weight fishing, cause I need to start doing more weight fishing. Um, I needed a more a corrosive resistant type reel. Uh, all the reels I use are like the Steez SVTW and Terrace. Unfortunately, they are not corrosive um, or they are not corrosive protective. The bearings are not, you guys know what I'm talking about, but the coastal reel has the those bearings that are more corrosive resistant for the solar because it's designed for us coastal guys. But yeah, what do you guys think? Y'all like that? Okay, let's see here. Gosh, I missed a lot. I apologize. Okay, here we go. I'm a lose guy. I'm a lose guy or old Corrado 200E7 type guy. Yeah, those the Corrado 200E. That's a classic, man. 
Coastal is blue. Yes, sir, it is very blue. You want a hat? Okay. Are uh, you talking about this hat right here? Uh, you can get this from Bugs. <laughs> Oscar says you'll buy it when I when you break it in. <laughs> All right, sounds good. I didn't, but you say you're not left-handed, right? I, I can't remember. Beginner rod and reel setup for a 13-year-old for about a $250 budget. Hey, that's a that's a pretty good budget for a 13-year-old. Uh, I would probably do like a the Shimano SLX. Uh, that's like at 99 bucks, and then I would do the Hollow Point. Uh, right there, like uh, try to get a medium light, and that's as versatile as you can get for inshore fishing. Uh, you can catch up uh, probably like a 20 inch jack on it, no problems. You have the right line, and you'll have the right reel, obviously, and the right rod. Uh, it's versatile to be used off a of kayak, you can use it weight fishing. That's what I would do uh, for your 13 year old. Bob says it looks like a tattoo. Yeah, it is. It pretty much it is a tattoo law, honestly. It's like they call it the Coastal SVTW, but it's a blue tattoo law. The, the, the spool itself is it's not as shallow. It's actually deeper, so you can put more line because they, you know, Daiwa knows us Texans, man. We love to load our reels with a lot of line for some reason. I don't know why. It has to be the thick line. So uh, the, the spool itself, it's, it's not as shallow. Let's see, what line and rod am I going to pair with? That's what Randy asked. I am going to, well, everyone says put it on a medium light, but I also have the light action just in case. I'm going to be using the Veribas. This is the high grade. This is the multicolor. You guys have seen me use this. This is a 1.5 gauge, which is a 31 pound, uh, 31 pound test, 150 meters, so about 170 yards. Um, honestly, this is probably, Probably overkill for this, in my opinion, uh, but this is all I have left. I have to contact Veribus to get me some more, but if I had a choice, I would probably put a 1.0 gauge or a 1.2 gauge on this, and um, I don't know if you think the color is going to clash with this. I'm not sure. Um, I think it'll look okay, but this is what I'm going to use for now. Let's see here. What does that reel cost? The reel, that reel, I think... Um, MSRP is like 250 bucks, but if you if you search online, you can find them cheaper. Uh, let me just put that out there. Uh, don't pay retail. I don't like paying retail. <laughs> Did I give up on the Shimano Calcutta? No, I didn't. I just have a bunch of reels. Actually, let me get my Calcutta. Here's my Calcutta BFS. I have not given up on it. I just have, I have so many reels, man. I, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a real addict, a real addict. Um, yeah, I'm addicted to reels, man. I love having a lot of reels and tackle and lures that you see in my room. Um, I just haven't been using this, but I will put it back in rotation soon. But this right here is a, a badass reel, man. If you're looking for a high end BFS reel from Shimano, this is it right here. I mean, this is. It's hefty, it's heavy, it's so heavy duty. Aluminum, everything, but man, it can cast those small little, small little micro baits pretty dang far. Um, it's expensive though, but it uh, has all the bells and whistles of a high-end Shimano, but I do need to get it clean. I can feel it grinding a little bit. I have not cleaned it at all. I have not maintained it, and I've been using it for uh, about a year and a half now, so we'll see. But yeah, this is a nice reel. What's a good beginner kayak for a 16 year old? Hmm, like I said, I would I would invest in a used pedal drive kayak. Any of those pedal drives from Old Town, Hobie, Native, uh, anyone that has a pedal drive system, I would recommend. Uh, just get it used. You don't want to uh, break the bank for your first beginner kayak. My first beginner kayak was an Old Town, what was it, an Old Town Predator? 12 120 i think but it was the paddle driven kayak it didn't even have a rudder on the end i bought it used for like 400 bucks paid 120 bucks for the trailer so all in all less than a thousand bucks and i grinded my teeth on that kayak and learned how to kayak fish from that kayak so um, there's some great deals on the used market look at like i said look at facebook marketplace 
Also look at um, look at Craigslist. Um, go on those forums. I mean, people are selling their kayak, you know, left and right. All right, Peggy, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you later. Yak Fishing 27 says, my first MT MTB box arrives this Friday. Thanks for the discount, bro. Thank you so much, Yak Fishing. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I teamed up with Mystery Tackle Box, Catch Co., uh, Shop Carl's. Um, they're the big tackle internet store. Um, they reached out to me. They wanted to work with me, and I you know, needed a place to get all my tackle, and I thought it would be a perfect situation, so I decided to work with them. Uh, all the salt native stuff I get from Shop Carl's, MTB is all, all it, so it doesn't get confusing because honestly, before I got into it, I didn't know what the difference was. But Mystery Tackle Box, Shop Carl's, Catch Co., Salt Native, they're all one brand. Uh, they're all under the company of Shop Carl's, I believe. Shop Carl's is the main business and everything else fall, falls underneath it. Um, they're the ones that came out with all the Guggen baits for the Guggen squad too. So uh, they are the big parent company. So um, I mean, it's a big company, very trustworthy. That's where I get all my equipment or tackle rather. 90% of my tackle comes from there. <laughs> Everyone likes the suppressor, huh? the medium light. What is it that you like about the suppressor? Do you like the color? Um, do you like how it's muted versus the areas? I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. Uh, I, I like the areas. I think the areas looks really sharp. I think uh, this is Mark's MDLR, my buddy. He designed this rod um, through old 18. I mean, it's a sharp looking, it's a sharp looking rod. I like the real seed on it. It's a little bit, just a hair bit heavier than the suppressor. He likes cork. Um, I used to be a big cork guy until I started using the wind grips on the suppressor and I honestly like the wind grips better because they they last longer uh, they have more grip especially when your hands get wet and um, they just look really good like versus the cork right here if you can tell this cork is a little bit dirty um, it gets dirty up faster versus the wind grip you don't really can tell it's dirty so I don't know I, I just like the wind grip better now after using it but that's just my opinion everyone's a little bit different but the area is it's it's a sharp looking that's a sharp looking rod. You got the red, the gray accents here. Um, I mean, it's a nice looking rod. So I'm really interested in why you guys like the suppressor better. Okay, sorry guys. Let me catch up with these questions here. What's up, John? Welcome in. Blue and gray is a must. <laughs> Grand, Grandpa C says, I don't think the fish will mind. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty true. What does the reel cost? Uh, MSRP is 249 bucks, 250 bucks, but you can find them way below MSRP. Let me just put that out there. Oh, Oscar, you love that small Shimano spinning. It's the Sore. Yeah, that's a, that's a heck of a reel too. What's up, Arthur? Welcome in. Okay, Fishing Man Reggie says, which situations do I use different bugs, baits in? Click, click to shrimp, flats bug, etc. Um, that's a good question, actually. So it really depends on what the fish want to eat and what kind of bait are you seeing out there. If you're seeing shrimp, it's probably a good idea to use the hothead. The hothead is a small little shrimp imitation. I don't think I have any hothead with me right now. Um, if you're starting, if you see some, if you're like in your kayak or you're wave fishing, you see those floating crabs, might be a good idea to use a curl tail because that's a crab imitation. If you're seeing small little shad, bait fish, small little uh, minnows, and you're seeing a combination of a lot of things, a flats bug with a trailer on it would be a good idea because it's micro it's small. It moves like a paddle tail, and on top of that, kind of mimics like a shrimp crab, you know, hybrid. Um, so, I mean, it just really depends on what kind of bait you see out there. Um, I will, I will go through like a curl tail. I will go through a flats bug. I'll go through a hothead clickbait. 
Um, if the bite is, if I'm grinding it just to see what they're trying to bite, and sometimes it's just, that, that's the way you catch fish too. Uh, but when I'm looking at, um, when I'm looking at the bait, that's, that's mainly what I'm looking at to determine what kind of bugs I'm using. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. All right, Patrick, take it easy, man. Have a good dinner. Faust, any give any giveaways today, LOL? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have a giveaway too. Make sure you guys, okay, sorry, I mentioned this earlier in the live stream. I'm gonna do a, a like a $100 lure giveaway. All Guggen baits, I have a lot of Guggen baits I can give away. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I will post that up either today or later this week. Um, but follow me on Instagram and um, I do it on Instagram instead of YouTube because it's easier for me to keep up with it. Um, the logistics are so much easier. So follow me on Instagram and uh, yeah, get plugged in and we'll give away $100 worth of lures. Man, I have a, like, like I said, right over here on that shelving in those plastic bins right there, there's a hun like literally hundreds of dollars worth of lures. So we'll have a giveaway soon. Just follow me on Instagram. You just subscribe to my Instagram. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You want me to put the reel on the light rod and see what that looks like? Okay, actually, let's try that out. I actually didn't give it a chance, right? Okay, so we have it on the suppressor. Um, a lot of you guys said it's okay, but in my opinion, it kind of clashes, but I don't know. Let's, let's see what it looks like on the areas. guys think does it look better what do you think give me your opinion give me your honest opinion you saw what it looked like on a suppressor does it look better on the areas I don't know it looks okay to me I think that red and blue really matches well and the blue and gray maybe I don't know what do you guys think what do you think yes no or keep it on the suppressor I don't know let me know you guys dictate what kind of setup I should be using Lazy Mug, are you going to post a link for the mystery box? Are they every month? I would like to sign up. Yeah, so what you need to do is go to my, um, go to my, not this recent video, but the video after that. I think it's titled, uh, what's the title? Something about big fish in a small pond or something like that. Uh, it shows me on a kayak, like paddling. Click on that video. In the description box, there's a link that will take you straight to MTB, Mystery Tackle Box, and then select which box you want to get. At checkout, use my discount code RxAngler, uh, one word, at checkout, and that'll take $10 off your first box. And um, that's how you get signed up. And I have it, I do it every month, so uh, it's pretty good. They, 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 they throw in a lot of good lures, so it's not like your cheap lures, too. So Philip says you love the cork. Okay, I, I, I can see that. It, it, it matches pretty good, in my opinion, with that red one. Rhino says, I love both rods, but it makes more sense to use the Coastal on a medium light suppressor, in my opinion. Okay, that makes sense, too, because it'd be more versatile, right, I'm assuming? <laughs> Do I have a box of old reels? I, re, I rebuild reels. Want to get, get rid of any? I actually have a bunch of old reels on that shelf once again. Um, I don't think I want to get rid of them, but um, yeah, I have a bunch of old reels. Just for the color red and blue is just an odd color combo in my opinion. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, good point. Rhino says because of the cold front and the Hurricane that's off the coast, air pressure is really low, so the bite the bite is on. I mean that makes sense too.
Philip says I need line hunt. <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. Like I said, we're going to be putting the bear bus on. So, Lazy, Lazy Mug said it looks like the Texans colors. Are you talking about the real or the rod and reel setup? But yeah, we don't want to be, we don't want to be one in six, right? That's our record. Red and blue going to be like Spider-Man. It's going to look good, bro. Uh, that's, a, that's a good comparison, Spider-Man. <laughs> All right, Grandpa. Well, thank you for joining in, man. We'll see you later. John says dark green or gray braid, and it's a wrap. I have some gray braid, but it's it's too thick. It's too thick. Uh, it's not going to work well with this reel. But I see that. I see what you're saying. Carson says something weird about me is my setups must match. If the reel has color accents, or rod must have a scan. It's weird. I know. No, there's nothing wrong with that, man. I I totally agree with you. I feel like I've told this through a lot of people that if you if you look good, you feel good, you fish good, right? I mean, you're. You just have to have that confidence and whatever gives you that mental edge, in my opinion, because fishing is all about mental. It's like golf. Uh, if you have, if you put yourself down and you have a bad day uh, mentally, you're not there. Therefore, you're not working your lure correctly. You're not thinking correctly. You're not um, strategizing correctly. You're not catching the fish. So yeah, having the right equipment, looking good, your clothes look good, your everything is organized. Um, a lot of people will disagree with me, but. Uh, I like to have everything organized. Um, I like to have my reels and rods like clean, looking shiny, looking fresh. Um, I don't know. I just I'm weird like that too, man. I, I totally understand. But if if I feel good, I fish good. Reggie asks Nick, I need a mic to connect to my Go GoPro Max while doing videos. Any recommendations? Uh, I use the Rode Lavalier. Uh, I've been using that for a few years now, and it's it's worked really good. That's what I recommend. <laughs> Look good, fish good. I always I always shave and cut my hair before before leaving. I'm telling you what, man. If you look good, you feel good. You're gonna catch fish, man. That's that's my that's my belief. I always believe in that. That's why. That's why I asked you guys, which one looked better? I didn't ask you guys, what do you think about this performance? I asked you, which one looked better, right? Um, performance wise, I know they're all gonna be pretty good. I need to know what looks better. And honestly, I don't know, man. After really looking at this, it's kind of this clash. I'm not sure. But I do love the feel of that light action rod, man. That light action rod is really nice. So I don't know, we'll see, man, we'll see. I might put it on the medium light because I feel like this is more versatile, as Rhino said. Uh, I can actually use this on top water too, like a top water plug. I can use a um, one eight ounce um, paddle tail. I can throw a one eight one eight one eight ounce bugs on this. It's really versatile. Whereas a light action, if I try to throw a paddle or a top water, it's probably not going to work too well because it's too flimsy. It's not going to give. It's not stiff enough to uh, get that uh, walk the dog action on top water. So you know, I might I might actually use the medium light just for that reasoning. But I don't know, man. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think it looks good? It has to look good, man. It has to look good. Fresh when you fish. Look good, fish good, I feel like. Yeah, I'm telling you what, man. You got to look good, you fish good. Oh, what's up, Brayden? What's up, my man? You guys check out Brayden, man. He's my boy. Uh, drove all the way down from Corpus to fish with me in uh, the Galveston area. If you haven't yet, check out, his, check out his channel. What line am I spooling onto the new reel? I just hopped in. This is what I'm going to use, my man. The Veribos 1.5 gauge. This is 33, 31 pound. Uh, test braid. It's colorful because I it has to look good. You know what I mean? It has to look good. That's what I'm going to use. The 1.5 gauge, I would say this is equal to in diameter, probably 15 pound Power Pro. It's pretty thin. May, maybe 10, maybe 12 pound Power Pro. Uh, it's pretty thin. It's pretty thin for uh, 31 pounds of test. So it, it's pretty good. That's what I'm going to use.
I know people use spoons for fishing. Have you had any luck on homemade lures or homemade spoons? Uh, I have not. Um, I just really never got into making homemade lures. Rhino says medium light is more heavy duty rod for more task. Also, if you're going to use it to catch bigger fish and use and use or for more hardcore use like wade fishing, I want to see you. I want to see you use the coastal. Yeah, I think I am going to use a medium light to be honest. With you. Yeah, just it looks good on a medium light. It doesn't uh, the areas looks good too? But yeah, the medium light versatility it's it's there. So I'll probably put it on that. It matches my hat. <laughs> Who has better prices for fishing gear, FTU, Bass Pro Academy, etc., or is it basically the same? Lazy Mug, I would go to Shop Carl's, become a Shop Carl's member, and you save 30% off retail price. So Shop Carl's would be the cheapest, and it's free shipping. That's what I do. That's what I would recommend. And you can pretty much get any, everything that you can get from Bass Pro or Academy online. Now, Bass Pro Academy does have more inventory, like if you're doing offshore stuff. Um... I guess they would have more saltwater paddle tail lures if you're looking for like other brands like Down South. Unfortunately, Shot Cross doesn't have that yet. Uh, but uh, like, you know, terminal tackle, like, can you grab me that? Yeah. I use this now on the channel as my official swim hook. I get this from Shot Cross. I used to buy the owner swim hook from Academy. I used to order online on Academy, but I get all this from Shot Cross and these have been really, really good. Uh, yeah, I get everything from Shop Carl's now. What is my favorite fish species? Um, it's probably going to be redfish, man. I just love catching redfish. That's the most fish I usually catch on my channel. Um, it's just, I mean, they fight. They taste good. They're so uncharacteristic. They go up really, really shallow, shallow like inches of water. No other fish really does that. Um... And they're big when they go shallow too. Uh, they're very aggressive. They 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 school up. They tail. I mean, they they're they're so cool. They're so cool. That's my favorite fish species. But to eat, I would say flounder is my favorite right now. In short, they're they're delicious. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying, Rhino. If I use a coastal and it and it succeeds, it, it lasts and succeeds, it'll encourage us English to buy it because it's hard to find a good saltwater bait caster that can take a beating last. That's a good point, Rhino. Um, someone asked me today uh, about you know a model, and I told this person, look, man, there's no such thing as a reel in the market that's going to last in the saltwater. Saltwater is so abrasive. It really damages and it really, really puts your reel, um, it can really corrode it. No matter how corrosive resistant it is, salt water wins all the time. So, I mean, even with this very expensive BFS Shimano reel, I still have to take care of it. I still have to oil it. Um, I don't spray any of my reels down. Uh, I used to do that in the past, but I've learned that if you like hose it down with water or you pour a bottle of water, fresh water onto it, Somehow those salt particles will get into all these cracks no matter how tight the tolerance is It finds its way into the gears and in the long run it starts grinding it starts failing on you um, So how I take care of my reels now is after I fish I'll get a damp cotton cotton towel and I'll just wipe it down Make sure I wipe down visually if I see debris I'll wipe it down I never spray down water anymore and that in turn has cause a lot of my reels to last longer. Um, now if you use a cheap reel with cheap parts in, parts in it, uh, those cheaper parts are not going to last as long as the expensive reels with the more expensive parts. Um, I'm a true believer you, you get what you pay for. Uh, these higher end reels, they're not gonna last long in general if you don't take care of them. So you gotta take care of them. Uh, put that maintenance in the oiling, the wiping it down, stuff like that. And they'll last you a long time. The Coastal has the corrosive, non-corrosive bearings right here for saltwater use. Um, so it does have that extra edge versus something that doesn't have those corrosive bearings in them or non-corrosive bearings in them. So 
Um, I mean, it, I already know it's going to be a great reel. That tattoo I used, which was only a hundred bucks, uh, it finally crapped out on me. Um, but I've used it for over a year. I've never maintained it in a way like I've never taken it to a dealer to get it clean. Um, I've oiled it maybe twice in a year. <laughs> I know it's bad to say, right? And this finally took a crap on me, but it was only a hundred bucks. Um, but I know this is a higher end reel with more bearings, has more features. I know it's going to last. So you just got to take care of yourself. Just like your car, man. If you don't oil change your car, no matter if you drive a uh, $100,000 BMW or a $15,000 Hyundai, if you don't change your oil, they're both going to break down, right? So you got to maintain it properly. Samuel asks, pretty fresh to kayaking. Any tips as far as rod length for this application? I like to use seven foot um, or minimum probably six foot eight, uh, just because when you're finding a fish and you're in a kayak, if you if the fish starts running in front of your bow, your, your rod is long enough to go over the bow and um, have that line clear. Because if, you, if you're using a shorter line and you're finding a fish and they go across in front of your bow, that line can actually get tangled with the handle or rub on the kayak some way and break your line. So I like to have a minimum of six feet, eight inches. Uh, seven feet is what I usually use on all my rods for uh, kayak fishing. So yeah, and that length. I wouldn't go over seven foot though. I would probably, the max length would probably be like seven foot, four inches. Other than that, it gets too long for a kayak. What's up, Bobby? Welcome in. When is Mark going to get that H skiff? <laughs> uh, I will let Mark answer that. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. Follow him on uh, on uh, be a subscriber if you're not yet. But he posts a lot of this stuff on Instagram. But uh, it should be any day soon. Any day soon. Patrick says, buy the cheapest baitcaster combo at Academy, take it to the marsh and show it how it performs. Okay, I can do that. You like those challenges, guys? You don't want to see me go like to Academy, like those other YouTubers and buy like the cheapest combo and the most expensive combo and catch fish with it. If you like, if you like that kind of stuff, I'll, I'll be more than happy to do it. I don't think it's not hard. I just didn't think a lot of people liked it. But if you guys like it, then I can do it. Fishing Tackle Channel says, I have to show my wife the broken reels while my new reels on the... <laughs> that's, that's a good way to get a free pass, right? I, that's, that's a good strategy. Good idea, actually. You've noticed me been using the Outback recently. Is your old, old town still going strong? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the old town. Um, a lot of people have asked me what's wrong with the old town. There's nothing wrong with the old town. Uh, sometimes I like to take the Hobie to get a little bit of exercise. Sometimes I like to use the Old Town. It just depends on my mood. I can tell you this, though. The Old Town is heavier, so it, it takes a little bit more energy to unload and load back into my truck. Uh, plus, with the battery, you have to worry about you know, adding the battery on top of it with the motor. If there's anything that goes wrong with the motor, whereas the Hobie, it's lighter. There's not many moving parts, and um, it's more convenient, I guess, per se. But the old town gets skinnier than the Hobie, um, and it's 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 such a great kayak. Once you start using the old town, you become lazy in every other way, and just I don't know, man. Just old town makes you a lazy person in a good way. Ike says, new but starting to put together my tackle box in the way of lures. Do I have a suggestion for a good crab lure? Uh, the Bugs Curl Tail, man. That's that's the best crab lure that I can recommend, hands down. I've caught so many fish with a curl tail. You guys can follow me. You know the curl tail. It's, it's, it's Bugs Fishing best selling lure for a reason. So I would do that. Carrie says, I like the normal fishing days without the challenges. Okay, that's cool. That's good to know. You got a guy, you guys, you guys dictate on what you want to see, all right? 
If you guys want to see more challenges, you got to let me know. If you want to see a different type of fishing, you got to let me know because uh, I don't really hear much feedback from you guys, whether if you like the type of fishing I'm doing on the channel, you want to see a different type of fishing, you want to see more challenges. Um, we can do different things. I just got to know what you want to see because like I said, I don't, I get a lot of messages and questions, but those aren't the, the questions and or the answers I'm looking for for the type of <clears throat> the type of content that I need to put out for you guys. So you guys gotta let me know. I think doing those challenges is a good way to diversify and bring a different crowd, but definitely don't stop doing what you're doing. Okay, cool. That's that's good to know. Thank you so much. I want to buy a Hobie kayak, Outback, or Compass. I'm thinking Compass. Honestly, I would say go for the, the Outback if you can afford it. I agree. Don't be like the others. You the man, just like Thresher and Jeff and TRA. I think that's Texas Redfish Hunter. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Th thank you. Those guys, especially Thresher, is on another level. Uh, Redfish Hunter, I met him a few times. Really nice guy. Uh, they're bigger than me. So, um, I mean, you just putting... My name in the same sentence with those guys, that's that's an honor. Thank you. I try I try my best. Bobby, how is a wife's channel coming? Are you guys doing the catch and cook vids? Um, well, my wife, she's been really tied up. She's a school teacher, if you guys didn't know. She's an educator, so she's pretty busy. And on top of that, we have kids on our own here at our house. And um, it's, it's been really busy with the COVID and all that stuff. So it's been hard for her to do some filming. I've been trying to encourage her to do some more filming, but you know, she only has 24 hours in the day. So it, it, she's been kind of lacking, but lacking in a um, excusable way, I guess. Uh, but she'll get onto them uh, once she frees up some more time. She does enjoy making those videos. Those catch and cook videos are the ones that get the most views. So we'll continue on with those catch and cook videos. I uh, might even try to take her fishing with me and have her do her cook like out in the water maybe one day. Uh, we'll see. We just need to find time. And time is the enemy right now. It's it's really hard to get time uh, to make these videos. You would like to see more beginner videos for teenagers that are just starting out or for old people just starting out. Okay, that's cool. I mean... Yeah, I'd be more than happy to do those beginning videos. You just got to let me know what you need to see or what you need to know. I feel like um, my videos that I do, I try to give tips and make it as simple as possible. What I'm thinking and what I'm seeing on the water. If that's not working for you, just let me know. Let me know if you need it, if you need me to more simplify it or whatever the case may be. I just need to know what you guys need to see. Challenges are cool, but I prefer what you do. Effective techniques, tactics, and tackle mean more to me. I appreciate that, Kevin. I mean, I do enjoy fishing with different tackle and lures. Uh, that's another reason why I signed up with Mystery Tackle Box, because it'll actually challenge me uh, to try to catch fish with different type of lures I don't really use on a channel, like that previous Mystery Tackle Box video I just did with a shrimp lure. I would never, ever think about using that, but since that was in the Mystery Tackle Box, I decided to do it and I was successful with it. So, um, yeah, I like doing those challenges too in that in that way. So, how did I grow my YouTube channel? It's hard. I watch all of you in Mark's video, like watching vi movies and eating popcorn. Man, it, YouTube is cutthroat, dude. I mean, you just got to keep posting and you got to keep posting content people want to see. I mean, I mean, it sounds really simple. But it, but it's it's not it's not. I mean, you just gotta keep posting and keep posting. When people say keep posting good content, that means keep posting stuff that people want to see. You want to see me fish down here in Corpus? Is that possible at all? Uh, I would like to, but Corpus is so big. I mean, I would, if, if I was going to do a Corpus thing, it'd be like a Texas Fishing Travels. I would need like probably at least five days off of work to do that. I mean, that's that's going to be hard for me to do because Corpus is just so big. There's so many places to fish in Corpus. But I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's not, you know, 
I'll do it one day. We'll, we'll just see when. That's the thing. You want to see me catch an alligator? <laughs> Let's see, you want, you recently saw, take an old town pedal powered kayak that was the fastest of its kind. Curious to know if you can tow someone in a paddle only kayak if they paddle while I pedal? Not, I'm not sure what, what you're asking about. I'm thinking that, can you tow someone while you're on a paddle driven kayak? Like a conventional paddle driven kayak? That would be, that'd be really tough. I wouldn't want to put myself in that situation, to be honest. Can you make a video on how to put mono in your new baitcaster reel? Uh, maybe, possibly. I don't use mono, though. I use braid and fluorocarbon leader. Do I ever fish in the Dallas area? Uh, no, I haven't been there in over a year, but I know Weston pretty well. Uh, we're friends. So I'm going to try to go up there and see if we can do some fishing. Um... It's just it's just time, man. Like I said, time is the enemy. I just don't have enough time to do everything. There's so much I want to do. It's just I don't have time. Do I still have my medical career? Yes, I am still a full-time medical professional. Um, every time I go out is because I'm I'm off that day, and um, yeah, I mean I either I'm working. It's either I'm working at my job. I'm filming, I'm editing, or I'm being a dad. So, I mean, I have my plate really full. You're heading to the Port A Jetties this weekend. Any tips on the work of Spoon? Um, right now, from last time I was at Port, Port, the Port A Jetties, the redfish, well, according to Braden, the redfish were down below so I would make sure that that spoon tries to get down, but you're at the risk of losing it too because there's a lot of structure down there. So um, yeah, I mean, that's that, but that's the way you catch fish. You have to make sure your lure is at the, the proper water column. Uh, if Brandon's still on, he can maybe time chime in. I don't know if he's still on, but um, if I was at the Porte Jetty, I would be fishing the bottom with the spoon, like jigging it, like making sure it falls and you know reel it back in and fall and stuff like that. So. Do I, do I ever get mad while editing because you can't find some? I'm not sure what that means. What pound test do I use for my leader? What pound test do you use for braid and do you use backing? Um, that's a good question. I use this for my leader. This is my main leader line that I like to use on majority of my setups from my light action all the way to my medium light. And if I am going to go heavier, I'll go up to 20 pound, but I rarely use it. This is like my most versatile fluorocarbon leader line that I use, the Veribos Shock Leader 12 pound. Um, I'm going to be using my new Coastal. This one, the Daiwa Coastal right here. I'm going to be putting this 1.5 gauge, which is 30, 31 pound test. Uh, this is equivalent to, I would say, probably 12 pound to 15 pound Power Pro in diameter size. So it's much thinner, much stronger. And all, honestly, if I could, if I did have it in my hands, I would actually put probably 1.0 gauge in this die instead of 1.5, just to have it a little more thin. Uh, but this is all I have, so this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to tie a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader at the end. Or I'll use a 20 pound, depending on how heavy... My lure is going to be if I'm if I'm throwing like a one ounce top water on my medium light, then I'll most likely use a one, uh, twenty pound shock leader, which I have over there. I'm just too lazy to get, but that's what I use for fluorocarbon. And the backing that I use on my reel, I actually don't back it with mono. I actually just I get electrical tape and I and I put electrical tape around the spool like one 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 rotation, and I use that as my backing. And I've never had any issues with that electrical tape. Um, it's always held up. And when I take the line out because it's old, it's always there and it's like, 
you know, planted on that spool and I always really have to pull, peel it off. But that, that electrical tape really gives it that, that firm grip from slipping. I've never had any of my braided lines slip because of that electrical tape. And a lot of people don't believe in electrical tape. A lot of people actually use mono. That's cool too. Um, but I prefer electrical tape because that's what I've been doing for years. All right, Rhino, thank you, brother. Thanks for chiming in. We'll see you next time. Is Yozuri braid good? I heard that it's thin like bear boss and half the price. I've used Yozuri braid in the past. Um, I wouldn't say it's thin as bear boss. The Yozuri that we ha have here in America that you can buy from like Bass Pro. Um, or no, the, yeah, Yozuri braid that you can buy from Bass Pro. It's, it's, uh, it's, just, it's the same as Power Pro in my opinion. It's not thin as bear boss. Um, I've used it a few times. It's it's okay. It's it's on par with uh, Power Pro in my opinion. I think Power Pro is just a little bit more better quality. Uh, but um, I wouldn't say it's, it's thin as Bear Boss. I don't think that's true. What store did I get my braid from? And thank you for answering my question. Uh, if you want to buy the Bear Boss product, unfortunately they don't sell it at a brick and mortar place um, go to veravoss.fishing and um, or just google veravoss and uh, it'll take you straight to the website uh, you can use my discount code rx angler yeah rx angler one word i'll give you 20 percent off the veravoss line um, but unfortunately like i said they don't they don't sell it at the brick and mortar store because they just they just recently started selling here in america they they their headquarters in japan uh, but they they've started an e-commerce here in america so veravoss.fishing is a website. There's no .com, it's weird. It's veravoss.fishing. And um, that'll take you straight to Veravoss America. And that's where you can purchase the Veravoss line. Is that electrical tape ever an issue during the Texas heat? No, I've never, ever, ever had any problem with electrical tape. Like I said, a lot of people don't like using electrical tape. I do, because I've been doing it for years. People prefer mono as backing, but I use electrical tape as backing and it's worked perfectly fine. I've never, ever, I'm telling you, I've never, ever had an issue with it. All right, Carson, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. All right, man, I think, uh, I think we're gonna call it quits, man. We've been going for, how long we've we been going? I don't even know how long we've we been going for a long time. But yeah, that's going to be it, guys. This was supposed to be an unboxing, but it turned to a Q&A because I, it doesn't matter with me. Uh, I do like to answer all y'all's questions. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. We're going to do a giveaway, a $100 lure giveaway from Guggenbaits. I mean, it's going to be a mix of topwaters, um, crankbaits, jig heads, um, soft baits, soft plastics, all that good stuff in order to enter it. Stay tuned, make sure you follow me on Instagram because the giveaway is gonna be on Instagram, not on YouTube. Okay, Instagram, rx underscore angler is my Instagram um, screen name. Make sure you follow me and then I will post the details on there. It's easier for me to do a giveaway on Instagram instead of YouTube for logistical reasons. So I hope you guys understand. So we'll do that soon. So thank you guys so much. I'm gonna end it there. Stay tuned, we'll have a new video coming out tomorrow. I think you'll like this new video. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I'll catch you guys on the next one.